So what do you think your purpose is? And what do you think your purpose is in relation to all of humanity? So yeah, we can have our individual purpose, career or family goal, some mission, hobby, some endeavor of some sort. And that's on an individual level. But what is your purpose as it relates to humanity? And do you ever think about that? So I've been thinking about that for a long time. What's our greater purpose? And is it possible that we all share the same greater purpose for ourselves? And I think that's very possible. And I think that's the case. Yes, I know everybody on an individual level is going to do all sorts of different things and careers and hobbies. And some people may never really find their purpose as they go through life and and feel a sense of purpose on either level. Maybe they don't feel as maybe you don't feel a sense of purpose individually or a sense of purpose to serve collective consciousness or greater purpose for humanity. You know, I know for the longest time I didn't have the sense of purpose for for either of those. I never, when I was younger, particularly, I never thought about, oh, what's my purpose as it relates to this whole big picture? What does God have planned for me versus what do I want to do as my own creator individually? What, What can I do to create here? So I just, I'm wondering if you ever thought about that. And I have, and I'm going to share with you what I've come up with. And yes, it relates to the offering, and that's what this is about. But uh, I never thought about it this way until recently. So on the individual level, I think of things as every human is a piece of a puzzle, and we are equally as important. Every one of us is equally as important. We're each a very important puzzle piece that create this bigger picture. In the same way, we create puzzles to mirror that, actually. We, we'll take a picture, somebody will take a picture of a beautiful mountain scenery or something, and then they'll have a puzzle made out of it. They'll cut it up into pieces and mix all those pieces up and then put them all back together. So we are, I think, a piece of a, of a broader puzzle. I think, okay, what could, the, what could possibly be here for? And I'm going to talk... Now I'm going to just talk about the collective and humanity. Individually, I can't speak to everybody. Everybody's going to have their own thing. So for the rest of this conversation, I'm going to talk about what is our collective purpose here. So one of the things I easily, you know, it's a lot of people say, oh, just to to love, you know, to to be kind and be compassionate and to uh, become conscious and all that. And Yeah, I think that's true, but I like to dig in and and, and find out why. I don't like, I personally don't like to be just told something and not be able to think it through, work backwards from it and make sense of it. So the first thing I do, if if yes, our greater purpose is to love and to uh, come together and be compassionate, and uh, be creators and of good things and, and discover our own power individually, but also collectively. So I always look at, okay, well, what what makes it valuable? Or what do we hold dear collectively? What do we all... So I think of great things that have been done in, the, in history or great people or great events or, or significant events that had great people behind them, we memorialize that if, if it's noble. Uh, we will memorialize that. We'll put put uh, make statues and write books on them and memorialize them in a very favorable way. But we don't really do that with evil or darkness or or hate, you know. So I, I this, this is how I'm starting to break it apart. I'm thinking, okay, uh, you know what what's the deal between love and hate or good and evil? And uh, you know, I I immediately think. It's very, very easy. It takes no effort 
to hate. It takes no effort to criticize or to judge. It's the easiest thing. And it's also something that we do not look up to in terms of wanting to memorialize that. We'll never take a really crazy, evil, killer person and build a statue to them and honor them. Because it, it uh, well, evil, I believe that darkness and evil can't live into eternity anyway. So, but to love and to uh, be charitable and kind and be generous, those things, especially love, if somebody's really great and they sacrifice themselves for somebody or some greater cause, we honor that and want that energy to live on in perpetuity. We try to, you know. So, and it's also the hardest thing to do. So that's very interesting for me. I mean, uh, I, I know it's so blatantly obvious, but it's also something we do not think about. Really, I don't, you know, we really don't give it as much thought as we should. And what if everybody that is living their life without a sense of purpose, what if it was so simple and so obvious and so easy and there was a map and a and a, a clear understanding of what that purpose is that everybody could attach to that. And nobody would ever have to say, well, I don't feel like I have a purpose in my life. Now, if we all had a shared goal and a purpose of living our life in accordance with some of the ideas here in the offering, love and joy and peace and, you know, beauty and perfection and imagination and forgiveness and kindness and, and uh, cooperation and honor and charity and humor and grace and awareness and surrender and humility. Like these are all words we know, but we're not doing them necessarily. So if you, and I think this is where we're going wrong is in school, when you learn something, you have to prove you can do it to graduate. So if you're in second grade and you learn mathematics or you, you know, you have to take a test and demonstrate that you can, in fact, do that to move on to the next level. Or whether it's sports, you know, you or a sport you play, you have to practice, practice, practice. And then when you can demonstrate that you can do that, you'll start and play the game. Or a musician. A musician will have to to practice and study and practice their, their scales and hours upon hours and years upon years. And then they have to prepare before they can perform. But they, they ultimately do it. So it doesn't matter really what you... What it is, it, we have this thing where we know, okay, you have to learn it, you have to practice it, and then you have to prove that you can do it. And we do that all through society. And then we honor that, by the way. We, we look up to that. Oh, wow, they're the best. Look at this concert pianist, or look at that great, uh, you know, athlete, or that scientist, or a, a doctor, or a tradesmen who's really good at what they do, a carpenter, uh, on and on, you can go into any field, by the way, but you practice, you learn it, and then you do it. And that's the proof. Well, we talk about all these things and we teach love and gratitude and kindness, but we're not doing it. You know, it's funny how we don't do it. And we find all these other reasons to, to not do it. Or, well, 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 number one, oh, we're busy. I've got a career. I've got to do something. So, and a lot of people forget about that main purpose, that, that foundational purpose for humanity. That's the one I'm talking about. What's our purpose as a whole, as a collective group? We set that aside and we go pursue our individual things. Yeah, I'm going to be a, a this and I'm going to do that. And, you know, and that's all wonderful. But if you don't have that 
foundational purpose or you don't have an understanding. Some people try to get there through religion, and that's great if it works, and I think it does for many people, or just their own spiritual practices. And I, that's many, many, many people are there. You know, we're not holding ourselves accountable to these tests that you would have otherwise in our careers and in, in our hobbies. We have these tests. You have to prove yourself. Even if you want to join some club, a hobby, you got to some level, you have to prove you're, you're worthy to be in that club. But we're not doing that all the time. And that's fine because I don't think we're all going to be able to prove it. I can. I can't be perfect. I cannot. Uh, I certainly haven't been able to prove any of this in the offering, all these words. I, yeah, I have good days and I'm days where I'm really nice and kind and I have days I'm not and I'm falling way, way short. But I think if you're a person who maybe doesn't have a sense of purpose for your life. That might be because you don't have a sense, uh, I'm just saying it could be. I'm, maybe there's that foundational purpose has to be put in place first. And as now at my age, I think of it that way. I think you really can't have any other individual purpose in life until you have some really solid foundation to build upon and some foundational, moral foundation that is your home and it's going to bring you home. It's going to ultimately bring you home to God where, you know, we all have come from, in my opinion. So, but to have, to have something now and say, okay, no, I do have a purpose, and you work on that purpose, to me, the foundational purpose, then the other things may just fall into place for you. It may get very easy. I imagine they just come to you because, you know, imagine if we could all say, oh, what's your purpose? Well, my purpose is to, to be the best person I could be, to serve humanity, while at the same time, through I can serve humanity's greater purpose by being the best person I can be. So you're, you're already serving yourself to be the best that you can be, but that serves humanity. So you're not actually sacrificing yourself to uh, serve the greater good, but you're actually fulfilling yourself to serve the greater good. And you're taking care of yourself so you can be the best puzzle piece. And we've all seen old puzzle pieces that are all beat up and frayed, or maybe the paper's peeling a little bit off the veneer. And Well, you don't want that. You want to be a nice, clean, crisp puzzle piece that you're going to fit into place to serve the greater picture. So the best way to serve God and to serve humanity is to serve yourself first in the highest and best way you can. And that's by treating yourself with honor and love and forgiveness and acceptance. Using your creativity. These are all words that I'm saying in the offering. Rediscovering the beauty and perfection that is you, that is within you. To me, that's it right there. I believe the purpose for all of us is to rediscover the beauty and perfection. Both words, they intersect with each other on the offering. Beauty is a vertical word and perfection is a horizontal word. Uh, beauty has a grid correspondence of S3, and perfection has a uh, grid correspondence of 4R. What if that's all of our purpose? That's, that's the purpose for all of us. What if that's the case? To rediscover the beauty and perfection within us. And what if that beauty and perfection within us, those are two words, the other 51 words are, are that being fearless and tolerant and and cooperation and charity and honor and abundance forgiveness gratitude heart faith intention prosperity laughter dream healing truth pure truth both words pure is a word truth is a word 
being able to surrender, that's a word, surrender our ego for the greater good. So I kind of now, I just think that we all have to find that foundational purpose. You may find it through a religion, and there's nothing in the offering that should com- conflict with any religion. There's nothing in here that that I, I don't see anything. I can't find anything that would suggest otherwise. It doesn't suggest, oh, you can't do this, or you have to exclude that. No, it, it you know, I think this complements that. So you can have your own religion and your own communities and do all that. I, I don't see where any of these words interfere with that. Cooperation, you know, fearless. I mean, if, if, if I belonged to some group organization and they were teaching me um, the opposite of fearless, you know, um, teaching me to be afraid or teaching me to be fearful, well, I probably wouldn't feel good about that. Or, you know, act is a word in here if they were teaching me to be idle and not, you know, act or create. Or if I had a some group that was trying to tell me to be intolerant instead of tolerant or to hate instead of love, to be crazy, craziness instead of imagination, if, teaching me to be flawed instead of perfection, looking for the, my flaws instead of perfection. And think about that. We... We look for our flaws more than we look for our perfection. We're looking for flaws in other people every day and in ourselves. We look in the mirror and we're like, oh, I don't like this and I don't like that. We're, we're trained to look at flaws rather than to look for flaws rather than look for perfection. You know, wealth. Well, I mean, wealth in the context of the offering that doesn't sacrifice any of these other words. Wealth that allows you to be charitable and compassionate, kind and humble. Well, that's that kind of wealth is very good and prosperous. Prosperity is a word. If that, and then you use that prosperity to to help others. But the opposite of wealth is impoverishment. You start looking at some of the the uh, alternatives. So, I do believe a common goal we can all hold is to find the beauty and perfection within us. Look for that. Hunt for that like you would hunt for an Easter egg or like you would, you know, like you're trying to solve a, a mystery or a, you're just looking for a treasure chest. I think that's in us, you know, and that's... So nobody should feel left out. Nobody has to be left out. You know, the idea of having these other things, oh, what's my purpose? Well, I'm a... I'm going to do this for a profession or that for a profession. That's great. But when you die, you know, what, what all happens to that? Nothing. You know, it's just, it's all left behind. I'm old enough now that I've seen a lot of, let my loved ones pass away or have to, and, and you go through their old stuff, their boxes, their papers, the, the things they've, that were so important to them. They, and most of it means nothing. It means nothing. Unless there's something really good you left behind. Great memories th- or Things you're, those are the things that live on, but not the necessarily the the job or the. They they do have a place. Don't get me wrong. You you know you should have your individual goals and aspirations and and things you do and you you know but they can't be above the higher your higher calling your higher purpose. So nobody should feel that way. Nobody should feel I don't have a I, I'm missing a purpose. I don't I don't feel like I have reason or purpose to live because there is there's plenty of reason. Actually, if you were struggling to find your purpose, that alone could be a purpose <laughs> to find your purpose. I mean, well, that all kind of kidding there, but just a purpose of trying to understand life's mysteries. Boy, you would never have a, a boring day. That's the greatest thing of all. What do you do? I contemplate every day trying to look at God's creation and all this beautiful, magnificent stuff. The good, bad, and the ugly even. And I try to make sense of it. And I try to figure out how I can play my part to be the best person, the best puzzle piece. And find your own power, your own, your own creativity. That's the big thing. You know, you don't need... 
a job or a career or something to have a sense of purpose because what if your whole purpose was to just discover your own power through power of choice? What if there's something you do that you don't like to do, a bad habit or something you want to correct, and that was your purpose? I want to conquer that. I curse all the time, so I want to conquer that. Or I smoke cigarettes and I want to quit. Or I I need to lose weight. Or I want to um, be in control of my day and I don't want to have so many distractions and I want to get off the technology, the addictions, whatever it is, that could be your purpose to empower yourself to say, no, you, your brain is private property and you could hang a no trespassing sign, you know, in your, in your mind, you say, okay, this is private property. I'm not going to let just anyone in to infiltrate this sovereign, beautiful territory and to Tell me what I should think and how I should think and what I should be doing with my time and all this other stuff. What if you just reclaimed your mind? What if that was everybody's purpose? We didn't have to all agree on anything. As long as we're not hurting each other. Actually, that, that to me would be the, the best. We all live. We all live in cooperation with each other. We all allow freedom is a word in here. It's a, probably one of the most, the words I'm most endeared to. I love that word because uh, it's it's a vertical word right in the middle of the offering with a great correspondence of O7. But I love that word because freedom allows me to fall. I don't need anyone to protect me from hurting myself. It allows me to get up. It allows me to make choices. It, it allows me to grow and learn uh, even with the difficulties. And the struggles. Imagine if if you just were given some degree or diploma or something and you didn't work and earn it. Or you were given a trophy for something. And they gave you say you didn't even play the sport. You say in high school, go to go back to high school and and you didn't play on one of the sport teams you wanted to, but you got a trophy. And it said, Oh, championship. And you, you received the trophy with your name on it. It would mean nothing to you. You probably wouldn't even put it up because you wouldn't even be proud of it. Because you didn't work through the pain and the struggle. So freedom is allowing me to fail. As long as I'm not hurting other people. But I don't need people to protect me. So you can live your life with purpose just by taking control of your thoughts and your actions and not leaving it go by chance and letting other people dictate to you. I think, in closing, the best thing we can all do is find our foundational purpose in life to reclaim the beauty and perfection within you, to find your power, use your power, make your choices with purpose and meaning and awareness And intention. Intention is a word. Awareness is a word. Have your thoughts be pure. That's a word in here, a vertical word. It's at the bottom. It intersects with surrender and consciousness, actually. You want your thoughts to be pure, but you want them to be yours. And if they're your thoughts, they're more than likely going to be pure. Our thoughts get contaminated. We're, We're very pure when we come into this world. A little baby's not in the womb thinking, I can't wait to be born and learn to hate people. And I can't wait to learn to give people the middle finger. And I can't wait to cut someone off or, you know, really hurt someone or punch someone in the face or kill them. Babies aren't thinking that. That's all learned behavior. When they come out of the womb, they are just uh, taking it all in. Unfortunately, you know, a baby may be born into a bad environment, but the baby at birth, that's pure love at that moment. That's all God's work. It's pure, uncontaminated, that whole process. So it's learned. But contamination comes over time. Matter of fact, most people don't... uh, over time, they like themselves less over time. That doesn't make sense. I mean, if you're living here for 50 years, by the time you're 50, you should say, wow, I've, 
I've improved so much. I really totally love myself. And it's actually the opposite for most people, but that's a learned behavior. It's not true. It's not accurate. It's not who you are, but if, if you grow up and everybody is trying to manipulate you to control you, well, they're not going to tell you how great you are and how you should. You don't need them because there's nothing in it. That's why doctors, well, they won't really tell you, hey, go home and exercise and, and uh, lose weight and eat well. Don't eat junk, processed food and meditate and turn the TV off. They don't tell you that. So I'll take this pill. Yeah, take this pill. Come back in two weeks and see me. So I would just say you have a purpose. You have a purpose. First of all, uh, you are a piece of this big puzzle. And every piece of a puzzle is needed. You know, if you had a thousand piece puzzle and if you missed one piece, you would never hang it on a wall when it was done. Could you imagine that, a puzzle piece? You say, uh, and you know, there are some puzzle pieces that don't have any real, you know, defining features about them. It may just be gray, you know, a, a piece that's just gray or it's just like even white. It might just be white or black or, or it's just a certain color. It doesn't have a lot of definition to it. But that piece is so critically important that you would never take that puzzle and then tape it all at the back and make it all one and and and, and frame it and put it on your on your wall because everybody would say, oh, what happened to that piece? And you know what everybody would say? Oh, it's a shame that piece is missing. Did you look for it? Did you find it? Well, I'm looking for you now with this little conversation. You know, I'm saying, hey, no, you are the piece we need. You have a purpose. I mean, don't let, don't let anyone ever tell you you don't have a purpose. Because that's the greatest lie in the world. You have a very, very, everybody, I don't care if you're a nuclear scientist or someone who's struggling with an addiction or, you know, just the, the life's a mess like mine was. You know, when I was drinking and doing drugs and, and getting eaten pizza out of a dumpster, you know, and living in a pickup truck. Uh, you know, what if at that point I said I didn't have a purpose? Yeah, I had a purpose. And that, that all those experiences I needed to go through. My loved ones probably could have done without it, but, you know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you have a purpose. Find your power. Make your own decisions. Think. Just think for yourself. Just start to think. And if somebody tells you something, don't listen to it and say, oh, okay. Stop. Separate yourself and think about it and pray on it and ask God and say, give me the truth on this. And then just keep taking things apart and say, well, why would they do that? If anybody's telling you anything, by the way, first thing you want to do is, what are they getting out of it? More than likely, there's some financial reward or payment for them of some sort. So that's number one. Or they're trying to ha gain influence, or maybe they're trying to instill fear in you so you follow them and do what they say. You know, if somebody is telling you something, it's a good chance it's this, they're trying to get their own needs met, not yours. That's just life. I mean, that's just a fact. That's a... Uh, Something to think about. You have a purpose. And you can be grateful for having that purpose because it's a fun ride once you know, hey, okay, what are you doing in your life? I'm trying to be the best person I can be. I'm discovering my power. I'm making my own decisions. I've posted my uh, mind with no trespassing. You know, I, I live in a somewhat rural area and people will post their properties with no trespassing signs. They say private property, keep off. Well, you can do that in your mind. Keep out. Keep out. I don't want you here. I don't need to turn on the news every day and get and just get fill my mind with junk and garbage and fear. When is the news ever, you know, came on and said, Hey, you know, I want to tell you how you can be the best person you can be today. 
It's always about doom and gloom and to put you in a state of fear and to keep you so that you turn that TV on the next day because of, well, I got to check in. The end of the world was coming. Yesterday was the end of the world. So I got to check in tomorrow and see if we're any closer to it. That's the deal. They're just trying to, they want the ratings. They want your viewership. They want to control you. And then they're living their dreams. So, hope that something to think about for you. And uh, I want to continue the conversation another time about this topic when I'm not so tired. Good night.